Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen, and today we're going to look at the time calculator. The time calculator is pretty cool. All we have to do is go to the full description and starter code on repl.it to get started. So we'll go there. It will load. Just reload if it's having trouble. Seems to be fine. All right, next thing we want to do is look at the readme, and we can preview it. So what we want to do is we want to add the time that we list here onto the time we have listed in the first parameter. So we want to add three hours and 10 minutes to three o'clock PM and it will return 6, 10 PM. Or if we add 2.32 to 11.30 AM, it will return 2.02 PM on Monday. If we add 24.20, so that's like a whole day plus 20 minutes, then it will say returns 12.03 AM on Thursday and then two days later. And then if we add like an absurd, absurd amount of time, then it will say nine, nine days later. And it will also give the correct time of, of the day. So yeah, this one's kind of cool. Yeah, I can actually see how it would be somewhat useful in the real world. So it's cool there. In the main.py, this is where we call it. Uh, we just want to add two hours and two minutes to this 11.06 PM and return it and print it out. But of course, there's a bunch of tests that they want us to pass. I think there's like 12 of them in this one. Let's take a look at the time calculator. This is what we have to start and let's uh, get into it. The first thing I wanted to do was make make a list of the days of the week because I know I would need them eventually inside of here. So I have this days of the week in index. Monday is zero, Tuesday is one, and so on. And then the days of the week array is Monday, Tuesday through through Sunday and make sure they're capitalized because that's how they have it displayed here. Here, Thursday is capitalized. So I wanted to make sure that that was consistent. The next thing I did was I split up the start and the duration so that I could separate the hours from the minutes for each one. So I started with the duration one right here. Uh, we make a duration tuple by doing partition. And what partition does is it splits up your your string by this colon so i get the duration which would be 310 right and it splits it up by the colon so then we get three and then we get colon and then we get 10. so yeah if i printed out this duration tuple let's see what we get i'm just going to return the start for now so that there's no error and then run it of course we fail a bunch but yeah this is the tuple that we get back two colon o2 and we can get the value in the tuple by just doing an index of it. So index zero would be the two, index two would be the O2. And then that's how we get the hours and the minutes. And then we can kind of do the same thing for the start time, but also with the start, there's this AM and PM on it. So yeah, with the start, there's this AM and PM. So we need to handle that too. So that's this is what I did for that. We have our start tuple. So we split it up between 11 and colon and then 30 a.m. And then we take the 30 a.m. and we split that up by the space so that we get 30 space a.m. And our hours will be the first one, of course. And we also change them into ints so that they're not strings anymore. Start minutes is the start minutes tuple after we split it up again by space. And we get the first value there. And then a.m. or p.m. would be the second value of this tuple when we split it up. So that's how we split those up. And then I have this aim and PM flip dictionary um, to help me later. Next thing I did was I just added into the minutes. So I did end minutes equals start minutes plus duration minutes. So that would be this duration minutes plus the start minutes right here. So I add those up and that becomes the end minutes. And then what I did was I said, if our end minutes are greater than 60, then we have to add an extra hour to our time. So then I just, I can add it to start hours or I can add it to, to uh, duration hours, but I just added it to the start hours, because why not? And I added one onto that and I just did end minutes modulus 60 to make sure that it won't be ever over 60. And I would just get the remainder of that. And then I can calculate the end hours after that, after the if statement. I can say end hours equals the start hours plus the duration hours, and then modulus 12 on there to make sure it doesn't go past 12 or over 12. It can be zero, which is a problem, but I fixed that later on. I could probably actually just make it 13, possibly. I'll do it a different way. So yeah, this is how I fix this. So I say my end minutes, I'll ignore this for now. 
our end minutes are going to equal our end minutes if our end minutes are greater than 9. So this is kind of like the ternary operator in JavaScript, except it's Pythonized. So there's this if and else in there. Um, this is saying if end minutes is greater than 9, then just return end minutes. Otherwise, we want to add a 0 before end minutes so that it you know, is 0, 5, or you know, 0, 02 instead of just 2. And then for end hours, we have it if end hours equals 0, then we change it to be equaling 12. Otherwise, we just have end hours like so. So that will get us the correct end minutes and end hours. So we got the time right now for everything. Next thing we have to do is make sure we're on in the correct day and the correct AM or PM. So I think I'll do the correct AM or PM first. So here we have our AM or PM and we can kind of do it here. I think this is what I do. AM or PM equals AM or PM flip, AM or PM. I also have to add in another line here. So here I have this uh, amount of AM or PM flips, okay? And it takes our start hours plus our duration hours, okay? Which would be like 11 plus zero, I guess at this point, or like 11 plus two, and it divides it by 12, okay? So 11 plus two would be 13 divided by 12 would be one as an integer, okay? And then I say, if our amount of AM or PM flips modulus two equals one, so one modulus two equals one, then we actually want to flip our AM and PM, and that's where we take this AM or PM flip object right here, and we pass in the current one, and it gives us the, the next one. So like if it was AM, then it'll give us PM, because the hours add up to more than 12. And then basically if it doesn't add up more than 12 or if it's an even number of flips, then we just return the current AM or PM. So it makes sense there. And then I have this return time variable, which will take our end hours plus colon plus our end minutes plus space plus our AM or PM. And we can actually just return this return time and see what it gives us for now. So if I run this, and we can also clear out of our console by just doing clear at the bottom and then running it again. So here, this is what I get for my return time right here, 108 AM just for that one. So it's looking good there. Now I just have to get the days in there as well. So this is where we're gonna actually use these two variables. First of all, underneath AM and PM flips, we're gonna put in the amount of days and that's gonna be our duration hours divided by 24, and we're gonna make that an integer. So if it's not greater than 24, then it will just be zero. If it is 24, then it will be one, one whole day. And then we can uncomment this, and then we can say if AM or PM equals PM, and the start hours plus duration hours, if the start hours plus the duration hours modulus 12 is greater than or equal to 12, then we want to add on to our amount of days of plus one. So this basically handles the case of this right here, where we're only given three hours and 30 minutes, which obviously isn't a whole day. But since the time is already 1010, so our start hours plus our duration hours is greater than or equal to 12, right? Then we actually need to add in another day and it's PM as well. If it was AM and it was greater than 12, then we won't have to add another day. So that's what that handles. And then if they pass in the, the day it is, then we actually have to return what day it is going to be. So we actually have to add in a, another parameter here. And we're gonna say day, day of week equals none for default. But if they pass it in, then it won't be none anymore. Or right, we're actually just gonna say false actually, just so that I can say if there's a day of week, then we can do it. So I'm gonna do that underneath return time. So we're gonna say if we have a day of the week, and we want to make it lowercase. So we do that with dot lower. And then our index that we need is our days of the week index, day of the week. So we pass in the day of the week to this dictionary here, and it will give us the index of that day. So if it says Tuesday, then it will give us one. And then we add on the amount of days. So the amount of days is that variable that we had before. Add that onto there, and then we do modulus seven for the seven days, and that will give us our index. And then we just get our days of the week array, and we pass in the index, and we get the new day that we need. So let's say it's Tuesday, and 
our day of the week is Tuesday and our amount of days is actually going to be two. Then we add on to Tuesday plus two. So Tuesday is index of one. So then we do one plus two is three. And we go zero, one, two, three, and we get Thursday, uh, which would be correct. And we say two days later. So then we say return time plus equals and then plus the new day. And then to get this two days later, that's coming up here. We say if our amount of days equals one, then we want to just say next day. If our amount of days is greater than one, then we want to say this amount of days later. So here it would say two days later at the end, and we would get this output. So that's all we have to do there. And we can run it and see what we get and run it. And it says ran 12 tests and OK. So we can also get rid of this print statement, whoever that is. Yeah. And instead, I guess we could just print our return time. But actually what I did, did was I added some tests. So inside of main.py, you can just add in some tests that you want to do. So here I add in a, a ton of numbers or a ton of hours. See what that gives us. So right there, it says 6.18 a.m., 20 days later, and it passes all the tests. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool logic as well. Um, got some cool Python ternary operators in there, which I was pretty proud of. Did this partition thing to split up all the different bits of information that we needed, and then did a bunch of different logic to make this thing work. And it's not too long, I hope. I hope it was pretty easy to follow too. And uh, thank you for watching. Comment, like down below, subscribe if you have the chance, and I will see you next time. See ya.